Today we're talking about promising new treatment for women with ovarian cancer. It's a PARP inhibitor called Nirafarib, which is also known as Cedula. It's a targeted treatment for women with relapsed ovarian cancer who are still responsive to chemotherapy. And what it does is lengthen progression-free survival, which in English means that patients could have more than double the amount of time in remission before they need to have treatment again. I was diagnosed with stage 3C ovarian cancer almost exactly six years ago and that meant uh, three months of chemo uh, before having a radical hysterectomy followed by more chemo. Uh, that was tough and it took quite a while to get over that but uh, the results were good. I wasn't in total but quite good remission and that lasted for about two and a half years. And then there was a recurrence, so that was more chemo and a couple of other maintenance drugs. But as, as soon as that stopped, the next episode was less than a year after that, uh, when the scan showed that things were growing again. And that was when my oncologist uh, suggested that I have another course of chemo, but then follow it with Nirafarib. And I leapt at that opportunity because uh, it, it meant that I, I could tell by then that uh, if I didn't do anything, if there was no treatment, as soon as you stopped, the, the cells started to multiply and it would probably just be another few months before I had to have more chemo. Uh, so having Nirapirib, this progression-free survival, uh, means that I can get on doing things, being health, feeling healthy, and at the same time, and knowing that something is suppressing the, the tumours, which kind of feels more proactive than just waiting. And in the meantime, I've been able to do things that you couldn't do on chemo, like travel, improve my Italian, go to the opera again, uh, even wait to see my niece come back from a year-long trip in Europe and Asia in a camper van with her boyfriend. As I had the BRCA1 gene mutation, I always knew that a PARP inhibitor would be a possible future treatment for me. Um, NICE guidelines stipulate that patients have to have had three lines of chemotherapy before they're eligible to take Nirapirib. Um, I just finished my last chemo uh, four weeks ago um, and then started taking the Nirapirib. A uh, PARP inhibitor, a cur curveball for me is that my gene mutation is a variation of unknown significance which means that I may not have been eligible um, for one of the previous uh, the PARP inhibitors that are on the market, like Olaparib. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really, really excited um, about uh, Nirapirib being approved because unlike Olaparib, which is just for BRCA patients, Nirapirib, this new one, is, is great for both BRCA and non-BRCA patients. Um, PARP inhibitors are proven to have good results for people with BRCA mutation so I'm hoping Nirapirib has the same results for me. Um, as I've had two recurrences in the past two years, um, progression-free survival is of utmost importance to me. Also I know that in the UK the survival rates for ovarian cancer are incredibly poor so hopefully Nirapirib will see us buck that trend mm. um, for patients like me. Well, unlike chemotherapy where you tie to the hospital and you have to go in and be rigged up to have it by uh, IV, uh, Nirapirib is tablet form. So the onus is very much on me to remember to take it. It's recommended to take it at the same time every day um, and bedtime is a good time to do that. So I set an alarm for myself just to remind me to take it. I also have to remember to take enough tablets when I go away on holiday. And there was an occasion recently where I was out um, for the evening my alarm went off, I didn't have any tablets, so I had to rush home to take the tablet. Um, but it's great not to be tied to the hospital. Um, the only time I really need to go is for blood tests, just to monitor things, um, just to make sure my platelets uh, are good because they can drop. Uh, also high blood pressure and heart rate also gets checked. Um, I have a little bit of nausea and some fatigue at the moment, but it's nowhere near as extreme as it was when I was on chemo and I'm told that those symptoms will abate as my body learns to tolerate the treatment. In my case, the blood pressures remain stable, but the platelet count has fallen on a couple of occasions. And then you have to stop for a week, measure them again, and unfortunately they've moved up in both cases, back to normal levels, so you start again. Um, it, 
The other things that you are warned about uh, are nausea and uh, fatigue. And I suppose I've been very fortunate uh, on the nausea side. I, I was given a tip to take the pills at night, as Ingrid had mentioned, but then take an anti-emetic, an anti-sickness pill before that. And that seems to have worked very well for me. In fact, now I don't even take that. Fatigue, well, yes, you have to pace yourself a bit, but in many ways I feel in better shape now than I have done for way before the cancer. Uh, my sister was quite surprised when I managed to walk with her for several kilometres at a time when I went up to visit her in, in Scotland. Um, it does affect uh, your insides a bit, uh, one way or the other. And in, in my case, uh, let's just say I eat a lot of prunes at the moment. This treatment is now available for women with relapsed ovarian cancer with and without BRCA gene mutation who still respond to chemotherapy. There are regional variations, but if you think you might be eligible, have a chat with your oncologist about whether this is the right treatment for you.